This is Math 99, section 13.5, and we are doing nonlinear systems. So we're saying nonlinear, so that means not straight lines. Um, remember when we first started doing systems, we talked about it's just these two lines and where those lines cross. Now, if it's nonlinear, they don't have to be lines. For example, I could have a circle and a parabola or something, and I'm trying to find all the places where those two shapes cross each other. So if it's a nonlinear system, you know, that means that I'm not going to have um, just like linear things in my system. <laughs> that seems like a pretty obvious definition. So um, x squared plus y squared equals 9. Notice how x is squared, y squared. It's not going to be a straight line. Um, x plus 2y is 3. And that one actually will be a straight line. So what I want to know is what are all the XY combinations that make this system uh, work, that makes it true? So what I'm going to do is try and solve this, and I'm going to solve it by um, same methods that I did before. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do any elimination here. Uh, nothing's going to cancel out. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll solve this for X. So I'll subtract 2Y from both sides because then I can substitute it in. So I know that X equals um, negative... 2y plus 3. And if that's what x equals, I can substitute it into the other equation. So x squared, that's a negative 2y plus 3 squared, uh, plus y squared equals 9. Great. And so notice what that did for me. This statement is only in, in terms of one variable. It's just in terms of y. So from here, I should be able to, uh, I should be able to solve this out. So I'm going to have to square this thing. And Squaring, remember, this is a subtle but important point. When you square this, you're multiplying by itself. Square means times itself. So negative 2y times negative 2y is 4y squared. And then I have a negative 6y and another negative 6y. So that gives me negative 12y. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So this thing squared is... 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. That's plus an additional y squared equals 9. So let me keep going from here. Um, I can combine some like terms. So 5y squared minus 12y. And I could also subtract 9. Uh, it doesn't equal 9. That equals 0. So uh, how does that help me? Well, let me keep going from here. I have this 5y squared minus 12y equals 0. And notice I can factor a y out of here. So I have y times 5y minus 12 equals 0. So these two things are multiplied together, give me 0. So that means that either y equals 0 or 5y minus 12 equals 0. Okay. So I've got one answer, y is 0. 5y minus 12 equals 0. So I can add 12 to both sides. Divide by 5. So y could also equal uh, 12 fifths. I could leave that as 12 fifths. I could also say it's, uh, what, 2.4. So notice what I've done is I found two different y values that work here. One of them is 0. One of them is 2.4. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them each and plug them back in to get x values that, that associate with those. So when y is 0, if I plug in 0 for y, um, x plus 2 times 0, sorry, that should have been plus, plus 3, so x equals 3. So one of the points that this system goes through is the point 3, 0. And the other one, I'm going to plug the 2.4 in for y, x plus 2 times 2.4, 3. So 2 times 2.4, what's that, 4.8. And then I can subtract 4.8 from both sides. Oh, I keep doing that. I get negative uh, 1.8. So the other point when x is negative uh, 1.8, y is 2.4. Let's try and bring some sense to this thing. Um, you know, we just did a bunch of algebra and, and these numbers popped out. So let me think about this graphically for a minute. Let's kind of clear up all this stuff around here. I'm going to graph this system, and I'm going to do it in Desmos. So my first equation was x squared. Uh, plus y squared equals 9. Now that's going to make a circle. 
And then let me graph the other one. The other one was a line x plus 2y uh, equals 3. And notice that these two things cross each other at two different points. And those are the points that I found. So what I'm doing, again, is I'm finding when these curves intersect, when they touch each other. We have this nonlinear system. We want to solve it. And I can't do elimination, so I'm going to try to do um, substitution. So on this one, I'll solve it for x. Get x all alone. So add 2y to both sides. And then what I can do is I can take this, since x is equal to it, and plug it into the x in the other equation. So as I do that, I get x squared, x is 2y plus 8, plus y squared equals 16. And so then I'm going to square this. And remember, when you square something, it's multiplying it by itself. So this is going to end up being a 4y squared. There's a 16y, another 16y, plus 32y, plus 64, uh, plus y squared equals 16. Great. And I will keep going from there. Combine some like terms. So 5y squared plus 32y. Uh, and notice I can subtract 16 from both sides in order to get this equal to 0 because I can factor it or maybe run it through quadratic formula or something like that. Um, so 64 minus 16 is 48. All right, so now what I can try to do is try and uh, factor this thing or uh, or something like that. Like, Or I could run it through quadratic formula as well. So let me see what I can do here. Let's see, 5y and y. And I want to add to 32. So I have the 5. 48 is 4. 4 times 12, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 12 is 32. Yeah, so I want the 5 multiplied by the 4, so plus 4, and then plus 12. So it looks like these two things multiplied together give me 0. So that means that 5y plus 12 is 0, 4y plus 4 is 0. So in this case, subtract 4, y equals negative 4. In this case, subtract 12 negative 12. Um, so y would be negative 12 uh, fifths, which if I want to do that as a decimal, that's a uh, negative 2.4. Great. So now I have some y values. y is negative 4 and negative 2.4. I can plug them back into here to get some x values. So when y is negative 4, x minus 4 equal 8. x minus 8 uh, oh, no, pl plus 8 equals 8, so x would be 0. So one of my points would be the point 0, negative 4. And I plug in the, uh, the negative 2.4 to give me the other one. x minus 2 times negative 2.4 equals 8. That'd be a plus, and that'd be 4.8. So subtract 4.8 from each of those, and what's that? Uh, 3.2. So my other point would be the point 3.2, negative 2.4. Those are my answers. Um, and let me let me graph them both and see see if they match up. Nice and pretty. So my first equation was x squared plus y squared equals 16. Nice circle with the radius of 4. And then uh, x minus 2y. It's 8. That's a straight line. And there's my 0, negative 4. There's my 3.2, negative 2.4. And uh, those are my solutions. So here's another system for me to solve. Uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And then y equals x squared minus 1. So uh, notice, like, I have actually a couple of nonlinear things. This is a... a not a line, and this is not a line. This is actually a circle, and this is a parabola. So we'll graph them in a minute. Let's go ahead and solve them first. Uh, so I think first thing that I will do is a little bit of substitution. I'll plug that into there. Oh, no, it doesn't go there. Actually, if I do substitution right now, I'm in trouble, because I'm going to be squaring x to the squared. I, I don't want to do that. That's horrible. 
So how about I set this up so I can do some elimination? Subtract x squared from both sides. So this is negative x squared plus y equals negative 1. And up here I have x squared plus y squared equals 1. Great. So um, x, now I can add these together, do that elimination. x squared minus x squared is 0. y squared plus y is just uh, y squared plus y. Uh, and that's a 0. So now what I can do is factor a y out. So y times y plus 1 is 0. So that means that y equals 0 or y plus 1 equals 0. So I am, y must be 0 or negative 1. So let me take those, plug those back in, and see what I can get for, uh, for my x value then. And I'll just plug them in here. So let me plug in the, the negative 1 first thing. So y equals negative 1. So if I add 1 to both sides, looks like x squared would be 0, which means x is 0. So one of my points is the point 0, negative 1. Great. So let me do the part where I plug in 0. So y equals 0. So 0 equals x squared minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. 1 equals x squared. Great. So now I can square root to undo that square. But remember, when I bring in a square root, a plus or minus comes with it. Because there's two things that x could have been. If I square them to give me a positive 1, it could be 1 or it could be negative 1. So interestingly, when, when y is 0, x could be 1. But when y is 0, x could also be negative 1. So I actually have three solutions to this, to this uh, nonlinear system. So let me go back and graph this whole thing and see what it spits out when I graph it. So I have x squared plus y squared um, equals 1. Whoops, should be y squared. It's that nice little circle there. And then my other one was y equals x squared minus 1. Oh, and check this out. It, they intersect at three different places, um, all those places that I found. So crazy cool. Okay, let's do another one. And uh, what I like about this system is this system looks like it's set up for elimination really well. Notice I have a y squared and a negative y squared. So I'm just going to add them together. So this would be 3x squared, y squared go, equals 9. Cool, divide by 3. <laughs> and I get x squared equals 3, which is kind of ugly, but that's all right. Let me square root that. x would equal plus or minus the square root of 3, which we can leave it like that. Or you could go uh, square root of 3 on your calculator. You know, get about like 1.7, 1 1.73 1 or something like that. Let me do it on my calculator. So that's about uh, 1.732. So you could leave it either way. But let's uh, let's roll with this and see what we can, we can do. So x is plus or minus root 3. So I could plug that into this equation. To figure my y values. So when x is is positive root 3, I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm just going to end up squaring it. So the square root of 3 squared is 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. y squared equals 1. Now we square root that and y equals plus or minus 1. Oh my gosh. So when x is root 3, y could be 1 or negative 1. So there's two answers. So let me plug in the negative case, x equals negative root 3. So that'd be negative root 3 squared plus y squared equals 4. Negative root 3 squared is positive 3. Oh boy, and I'm here again. So it looks like again y is going to be plus or minus 1. So when x is negative root 3, y can be 1 or negative 1. And this one actually has four solutions. So let's graph it and see see what that uh, see what that looks like. So the first equation was x squared plus y squared equals four. That's that circle. 
And the next one was 2x squared uh, minus y squared equals 5. And we get that hyperbola. So notice that these four spots are places where these uh, intersect. All right, let's go ahead and uh, solve this system. And this is going to be, this looks like a parabola and a, and a straight line to me, but we'll graph them in a sec and see what they look like. So um, solving this, I think I could do some substitution right away. I know, I know that y is equal to that, so that I could plug into the y spot in the other equation. So that gives me x minus 4 equals x squared minus 2x minus 4. So from here, I have a quadratic. And I'm just going to get it equal to 0 so I can solve it. So add 4 to both sides and subtract x from both sides. And as I do that, this side is a 0. So then I have x squared uh, minus 3x and a 0. Oh, oh, yeah, that's pretty good to solve. Factor out an x. x times x minus 3 is 0. So it looks like x is 0 from there or x is 3 from there. So now that I have, uh, now that I have those, what I can do is uh, go from there. So I'm going to plug these back in. So when x is 0, y would be 0 minus 4, so y would be negative 4. So one of my points is the point 0, negative 4. And when x is 3, I plug it in. y equals 3 minus 4. y is negative 1. So 3, negative 1. So it looks like those are my two points. And uh, let me graph this and see if that actually works. Oh, and there's the graph right there. That's convenient. Um, 3, negative 1, 0, negative 4. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's do one more example. Okay, so we have this system we want to solve. Definitely nonlinear. That's, uh, that's going to be an ellipse, and this is going to be a hyperbola. We'll look at the graphs in a minute. But just going to solve them, I can see that I have this plus 25 and this negative 25. I'm, I'm all set for elimination. So what I'm going to do is just add them together. This gives me an 8x squared. Y, y squared's dropout equals 200. All right, so that feels good. So divide everything by 8. Looks like x squared then would be 25. And if I square root it, that means that x is plus or minus 5. Cool. So then... Uh, if that's the case, let me plug that in and see what, what y must be. So when x is 5, I can plug it into either one. I'll just plug it into this one. Um, 4 times 5 squared uh, plus 25y squared equals 100. So 5 squared is 25, which is 100. So subtract that. 25y squared equals 0. y must be 0 here. So, and it goes to the point 5, 0. And if I plug in x is negative 5, I have 4 times negative 5 squared plus 25y squared is 100. Negative uh, 5 squared is, is 25. Look, I'm here again. I'll get the same answer, y 0 again. So it also goes to the point negative 5, 0. Let me graph them both, see what they look like. So the first one is uh, 4x squared Oh, and yeah, and you have this ellipse just being touched by this hyperbola at those points. All right, uh, lots of algebra manipulation here, as you can tell. Um, lots of dealing with quadratics. So feel good about that. Um, get your practice in. Send me any questions that you have.